and welcome to The Secret Mind. Do you know a poem? Don't turn off. I'm going to talk about poetry today. Do you know a poem? I was listening to a programme last night or the night before on Radio 4 Extra um, called Poetry Extra. I'll try and remember to put a link on it. And it was a workshop recorded in Newcastle, which they tell us, I'll read from the website because I'm not good enough yet at looking this thing up on the screen for you. Uh, the episode comes from Newcastle where Ruth Padell leads a workshop for a group of poets working on their own poems on the theme of the city. And she, the guys all read their poems out and uh, she assassinated them. <laughs> and they took it very well, I thought. Um, and it is a reminder that we can do these sort of things as well. Uh, Stephen Fry wrote a book on it uh, called The Ode Less Travelled in 2007. I can tell from Amazon that I purchased that on the 3rd of February 2009 and I gave it away. It was very good, although I actually ended up listening to the audiobook of it because it was Stephen Fry's mellifluous voice. But he was talking about defrighteninizing, making poetry less scary and something that's accessible to everybody. I can tell you, I know one poem by heart. Uh, because at the age of 10, I was told to go home, learn a poem and recite it to the class, as I imagine maybe you were. And I remember picking it, I picked it out of one of those books that were called the Fireside Books of David Hope. There were two of them, Fireside Books, with little uh, illustrations in them and little, little bits of poignant thinking and a few poems. And I picked it because I thought it was quite funny. And I'm going to try and remember it now. I haven't rehearsed this. But it's about a weatherman. And I think it's called The Weatherman. You know that optimistic chap who stands before the weather map? What he engagingly foretells is scattered showers and sunny spells. Fronts warm and cold go curling by, but which are wet and which are dry. His answer, like a peal of bells, is scattered showers and sunny spells. The anticyclones come and go. The pressure may be high or low, but still he stands and still he dwells on scattered showers and sunny spells. And when the cyclones hit our shores on loud and fierce, the tempest roars above the hurricane. He yells, it's scattered showers and sunny spells. That was the poem I learned. I don't know any other poems by heart. But around the time I bought that book, I started my blog and I wrote a few just to answer the call. His book, The Old Less Traveller, is a call to just have a go yourself. And uh, one I thought was actually the first blog I ever wrote, but looking uh, at it today, it was about the 10th. And this is about the 10th video blog I do. So I'm going to um, read it to you now. And it was called Susanna's Ocean. A-Z-U-C-E-N-A, -E and it was a, a, a Spanish girl I'd met who came up with the phrase that finishes the poem. Uh, and I thought, that's nice. I'll write a poem around that phrase. And it's about the sea. So um, here it is. It starts a little bit ungainly, but it gathers pace. It's a bulletin from Neptune's second to final frontier. Its headlines screaming, the planet is here. Unarmed warfare coming wave upon wave, a rage assault beckons the brave. Mariners pass with Poseidon's permission, riding the stylings of nature's beautician. But like each snowflake's different, each wave is bespoke. In watery graveyards, permissions revoked. Vanishing coastlines, like nature's magician, punishing shorelines with brutal attrition. A raw display of unrestrained vanity, banishing cliffs with saline insanity. Yet easing the mind like a favourite song, sweeping the beaches, righting the wrongs. A soft melody on endless repeat, the heart of the world in irregular beat. Gaia's draftsman till the earth finds its end is a quick-witted stranger and an angry old friend. 
an eternal craftsman, pounding at granite, marking time with the music of the planet. So that was that, and that was her phrase. Uh, she was, we were talking about the sea, and she said, well, it's the music of the planet, isn't it? I thought, wow, yes, it is. So uh, I wrote a few other poems. I, so I thought I'd read you one of mine, if that's it, and a few of somebody else's. Now, authors are best at reading their own books, I always think, and I went to see... Um, oh, let me just tell you, yes, the, um, the, the poetry programme was uh, Poetry Extra, and they gave all this um, feedback, um, and they took it, they took it so well. It was um, uh, delivered very bluntly, not with the usual sort of um, shit sandwich approach. It, it was just uh, you know this should have been better, don't you think? Uh, like a school mom, and um, the uh, um, and a lot of them, or a few of them, didn't rhyme. And um, so much so, one, I couldn't tell the difference between a short essay and a poem. I thought, well, what is a poem? So I did the only thing a man can do when he has a problem like that. Alexa, what is a poem? Poetry, also called verse is a form of literature that uses aesthetic and often rhythmic qualities of language minor such as phonesthetic, sound symbolism, and meter minus to evoke meanings in addition to, or in place of, a prosaic or sensible meaning. A poem is a literary composition, written by a poet, using this principle. A poem is a thing written by a poet. Um, so that's that. Um, Text with where you can read a bit more meaning into certain areas, and you're meant to. I'm sure it's more than that. But um, a lot of poetry readings can sound a bit dull and a bit like a, um, a sermon, a boring, sort of lilting, clever, clever melancholy. And uh, some perhaps don't need to escape their own diary where they're kept as personal notes they don't need to escape the therapy room um but i blame the school teachers for our uh, it's not just me our sort of aversion sometimes to poetry and the out my school teachers said today you're going to write a poem and you don't have to make it rhyme so i never did because it sounded easier not to bother but in fact it's very easy to do rhyme and it's fun. So um, you just need to think of two words that rhyme and then you can retro lever back in some other words. And before you know it, you've got a poem. And uh, so I would strongly recommend making it rhyme because nothing can put a chuckle on your face quite like a rhyme. They just make you laugh. They're just funny. I don't know why. And you're not facing such terrible competition. So I thought, well, who made poems rhyme? And I thought, Edward Lear. So look at the limericks. I remember being asked to do a, a limerick at school. I did one about... What did I do? Oh, well, it'll come back to me. I did a limerick about... Anyway, um, so I thought, let's look at Edward Lear's best limerick. So this is what Google ch chucks out. Edward Lear. There was an old man with a beard who said, it is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren have all built their nests in my beard. The best. That limerick by Edward Lear. So he's rhymed beard very cleverly with beard. There's another one. There was an old man in a tree who was horribly bored by a bee. When they said, does it buzz, he replied, yes, it does. It's a regular brute of a bee. Now, you see what he's done. He's used the same uh, same dreadful final line there. So you're not facing very stiff competition. That's the point. There was an old person of Buddha. I mean, he's leaving this in, isn't he? Whose conduct got ruder and ruder. OK, it's getting better. So at last, with a hammer, they silence his clamour by smashing that person of Buddha. 
There was an old man on a hill, who seldom if ever stood still. He ran up and down in his grandmother's gown, which adorned that old man on a hill. This is the best limericks from the most famous limerick writer of all time. So you do not have stiff competition at this. That is the point. So uh, I would suggest giving it a go. Now, I want to read somebody else's poem as well. And I went recently to see the brilliant Henry Normal, who um, you'll know his work. If you don't know his name, you should do. Um, <laughs> you should do. You certainly should. Um, he was, uh, he does poetry as stand-up, uh, many years ago as a programme with Frank Skinner, um, and he's touring at the moment, and I went to see him, and I bought one of his books, and he's very brilliant at, at reading his own, um, poems. This is the book I bought, it's called Collected Poems, it is a volume of his other books, and I got him to write a note, where he amusingly put collected item on there. I imagine this is not the only copy with that particular choice of text. Uh, and he's a very nice chap and he's very funny. And I thought, well, I'm going to maybe find some poems or you are going to help me find them by telling me what your favourite poem is. And then I'll know more than one poem. By the end of the year, I might know two poems. Uh, so I prefer them if they're a bit funny and I definitely prefer them if they rhyme. And I thought... Um, Henry's would be a lot like that. They're always very poignant. But I'm going to read you a few of his if you can bear it. And then I'm going to add a few comments on it. Because otherwise I'm just reading out his material. I'm not adding value. Maybe YouTube will copyright strike me or something. I mean, are you allowed to read out someone else's poem? I think so. I bought the book. Anyway, so um, I thought it would just get me into it. Now, I've found in reading the first ten poems in this book, which I'm not going to read them all, um, not many of them rhyme. I'm not sure if any of them rhymes, actually. I'll have to find out. So um, that is, that my first criteria is going south a little bit there. Um, but they all have something to say, and they all have a little thread of an idea, which you could expand as well into your own poem. In fact, you could use the idea that he's got. Take the idea and write a totally new poem, just like people do with movies all the time. They take the same plot and they write a new movie. Uh, there's only seven plots, they say, don't they? And there's only four jokes, or is it the other way around? I'm not sure. Um, so uh, here we go. So I'm going to start with the first poem in the book. It's not very long. There's a new poem on every page. And it's called The Breath Within the Balloon. And you can see where he got his idea from and how he expanded it. The breath within the balloon will not last. And the trouble is, it's always better coming from him because he's got such a lovely speaking voice. So me doing it is ridiculous. So here it is. <laughs> the breath within the balloon will not last. You never get you never get inflated balloons on the antiques roadshow. Breath brings with it vulnerability. If never inflated, a balloon may last forever. But such limp reason which will never enchant a child with decoration or gladden the heart with the stretching of possibility and the fulfilment of promise. Is not a universe of such balloons sadder than a universe where balloons are apt to burst? I hold your breath within my hands. The breath within the balloon will not last, but the giving of breath and the tying of the knot at each new birth is an offering for our choice of worlds. So you can see where he got his idea from there, can't you? The breath in the balloon. Let's do a quick poem about that. And it really it just comes from one quote. He expands on it almost unnecessarily because the bit where he goes, if never inflated, a balloon may last forever but such reason will never enchant a child. It's almost like a, a quote, if never inflated, a balloon may last forever. You almost don't need more explanation. That's like a Confucius quote. I won't do the Chinese accent, uh, obviously, unless you uh, like and subscribe. And even then, uh, nowadays, it's questionable whether I should attempt it. Um, so, yeah, you, you could create your own idea around that. Of mortality, you only have so many breaths till you die. You could, you could take that sort of line. Uh, you could rewrite that poem and make it rhyme. Then you've got a poem on the same subject matter, but yours rhymes, making it better than Henry's. Um, so he's expanded that idea. You could expand it instead, uh, and that's all you need. I remember reading a quote by Steve Martin, the comic actor of. Um, hmm, 
some good movies and some terrible ones. He wrote a book and he said, whenever I am short of inspiration, I pick up any other book and read one sentence and put it back again. And then I carry on writing. Just need a trigger, some random little trigger, anything, a bit of, bit of inspiration. Uh, the next poem is called, If Signatures Reflect Personality, They Cannot All Remain Constant. But you'll see where he, he gets his idea from. And it, the idea is just the idea of changing your signature, which you may have uh, faced. Uh, I certainly remember the day I changed my signature. I was taught to put a J in with a, with a hat on, with a cap on it. And then one day I thought, I'm not putting a cap on my J anymore. Uh, and I did a, a, swoop, a swooping J. And it kind of changes you. It changes how you represent yourself, how you are represented, um, how you feel about yourself. It's a flowing movement now. It's uh, You've got to flourish where previously you had stiffness. Very primal. Uh, but he had the good sense to write a poem about it. Um, so he comments on other things, really. I, 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 so anyway, I'll, I'll just quickly read it to you. It's not that I've forgotten my own name. It's just that my signature doesn't flow naturally like it used to. I hesitate as the pen blotches the first ink, self-conscious. Each letter has become foreign, a random code of symbols. With deliberate forgery, I have to match up, match up my commitment with a genuine signature that's already been approved. I'm cribbing off my own past. It's as if my signature is trying to change but is restrained by the functional leave, need of the authorised version. Strange how we set our own guidelines, our own parameters, so early for something so permanent. I remember practising my signature as a teenager. I'm, never, I'm sure I never understood this was to remain unchanged forever. As a result, my signatures have become clumsy, like a child's crayon letters. I suppose I'm worried. If I just sign a new signature, this will not be accepted. Is it possible to authorise a change of signature? How will I sign for it? So, that would be nicer if it rhymed. He's comments on his own signature, which we know isn't quite... Is it childlike? That's it. Uh, whether he likes his name, maybe it is a little bit. Um, uh, but it's joined up, just about. Um, it's a bit heavy in the first bit, uh, but it's a nice idea. I like the idea of it changing you, your identity. He's just gone really for the purely functional aspect of uh, changing the word into something shape different. Uh, but he's talking about a technicality. I would probably talk about identity. I'd probably make it rhyme. Um, would it be any better than that? I don't know. He's Henry Normal, and I'm not. The next one uh, is just a simple thing uh, about him that he's done quickly while he's sitting round with the family at Christmas dinner, and it's just a nice little, nice little thought. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, the next thing is about love at first sight. It has a, it's only short, it has a chapter in the middle about sex, uh, which I imagine was probably always difficult to write. Um, and he finishes off with the line, There is miracle in personality, there is wonder in attraction, there is love at first sight, I am already yours. And he often finishes off with that sort of contracting length of line. Uh, almost you feel like you're having a rug pull, pulled off you pulled away from you like you're thinking I'm at the end of this poem already it's obvious when you're reading it you know the ending's coming up you're hearing it performed you don't know when the last line's going to be different dynamic and it made me wonder is it even okay to quote a poem to take his last four lines out of context and not tell you what the rest are um, it felt a bit rude frankly uh, but people do it with songs don't they from musicals they'll release a song from a musical and send it to the top of their charts uh, top of the charts, um, and uh, people quote movies and song lyrics. Um, it just seemed a bit rude to do that with a poem. Um, maybe you could write about that. You could write a poem just about that alone, couldn't you? How rude is it to quote other poems? You can write a poem about absolutely anything. The next one is called The House is Not the Same Since You Left, which is very sad. And very powerful. I'm not going to read it because I'm going to. I'm looking really for upbeat poems, uh, but it has a nice twist ending. Uh, and uh, if I ever read a run of sad poems, um, that's a great one to pick. 
very nicely put together, very clever. Um, and the next one, this is a, a tough one. It's only 10 lines long or so, it looks about it. Um, it's all lowercase, it's called The Missing Page. See what you think of it. It'll be over in 15 seconds. Um, starts with a lowercase letter. And it made a mockery of the rest. And it became the most important of all pages. And neither of us could write a replacement, and we could never agree on its contents, only sometimes in broad outline. And there were times when we denied it had ever existed, and times when I believed it to be several pages, and it became the perfect excuse, and the amount we attributed to it could never be contained on a single sheet, and if only the pages had never been numbered, and... That's it. So, I wonder what you think that's about. It's called The Missing Page. Um, if you were seeing him at a show, you might get a little explanation of that beforehand or afterwards. Um, but without context, you have to make your own mind up. Seems to me it's about mis misunderstandings and how they can blow up quickly. But you may think differently. Let me know. And he does another one called The Last Parents, is the next one. Um, and he he has a little sort of very simple line which he does a twist on uh, of not being afraid of the dark. Um, okay, do it. it's only a few lines. The last parent. Huddled around the very last sun, a final handful of humans try yet again to create one artificial star that will survive. The parents telling... That same story of how the sky once dazzled with a million suns, how, as one by one, the lights went out generation after generation, traced a path like a dot to dot to this, the final glimmer, and how once there were as many souls in the universe as there were these stars, and how their parents had told them this story when they were young, and how their parents had told them not to be afraid of the dark. So... You can see what he's done there. He's taken a nice little idea of not being afraid of the dark and expanded it into the end of the universe. Nice idea. Not overdone. Very simple. Um, and uh, what's it about? You could get somebody to write an essay on that, couldn't you? If you wanted to torture them at school and ha make them hate poetry. But is it about the hopelessness of humanity? Is it about the pointlessness of fear? Makes you think for a few minutes. I mean, short poems that just give you a whole new thing to think of for a few moments. This is the advantage of it, I think. Um, so, the next one is called A Prayer for the Rejected. So, I'm thinking Henry is the comedian, and I start his book, and it's kind of heavy on melancholy. And this is why the word often used for these sort of things is bittersweet. But... Um, it's a rich thing. Uh, I read one review saying somebody would race through all his book and read it from cover to cover, beginning to end. That doesn't seem that healthy. But if you have to do this and have a dialogue on it, it does make you think about it. I'll do it. Ten lines or, or something. We start from nothing and build, and you may judge down from perfection. Catalogue all that we are not, measure against legends and eons, ignore mitigation, dismiss an original... <laughs> Dismiss originality as untested. Discard handicrafted as unprofessional. Destroy with a whim. Discount our unborn. Belittle our dreams. And despite all this again, we start from nothing and build. It's a nice idea of people who have an original idea. Having their ideas stamped on and stamped out by people. Particularly when it has to fit into a, a system. Um, you know, don't try to bring original ways of learning to a university, for example. They'll st probably stifle that, I fear to say. Um, and it did occur to me with the last line, there's no easier way to restart than if you write a poem. You just start again with a new line, with a sharpened pencil, and away you go. So restarting is never easier than with a, with a poem. Harder with a novel, but easier with a poem. So that's a big advantage to renew and and uh, and uh, reboot and reset. Um, the next one he does is called Skin. 
he's discovered, I think he's got a lot more skin than he knows what to do with. So it's a metaphor on aging. Um, and he does a little riff on it. Um, just that. And then uh, the tenth and the final one I looked at today uh, was called um, A Gift. Um, I'm not going to do it. I didn't fully understand it. I thought it was a bit cryptic. And it had a bit of a twist ending. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't sure if it was about maybe infidelity or, uh, but it was a bit too opaque for me to know exactly what he was, what he was referring to in it. So that is is that. So that's a bit of my thoughts and analysis. Um, and um, I don't think I've got a poem there that I'm going to learn off by heart. Um, I think I like the first one better best the breath within the balloon i thought that's a nice idea but um i don't think i'm going to learn any of those by heart but eventually i'll find one that i will i think and having seen him perform and laughed my socks off and he's got a radio show as well it'll be on bbc iplayer uh, if you can reach that uh, and he's hilarious and brilliant at doing his own poetry it's a joy to listen to him and there's plenty of stuff on youtube as well if you fancy looking up henry normal uh but I'm hoping to uh, maybe continue this periodically because it means I will read some poetry, which I otherwise wouldn't do. I wouldn't have read these ten poems if I hadn't been doing this blog. Uh, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, but I wouldn't have done it. Uh, and I won't read the other. There's a lot of poems in this book. A lot. Every one is about only a page long and it's 265 pages. I could do this every day for a month. I'm not going to. Um... And it's still not at the end of this one book. And when I bought this book for him, I got two. Um, so I've got another one next door. But he's not the only poem I should do. But I think I might stick with him for a while. Because otherwise I'll never finish this book I've bought. Um, and uh, he is brilliant. But I'm looking for other people who are brilliant as well. Um, Roger McGough has done some brilliant stuff. I've got a poem of his somewhere that I clipped off the internet uh, called Soil. And I thought that was brilliant. But, um, yeah, so we should all know a poem. If you don't know a poem, um, maybe you'll find one here. Uh, but um, thank you for your um, tolerance, if you've made it this far. Um, Stephen Fry's book on trying to encourage people into the idea of, a, uh, of not being scared of uh, a poem uh is a good thing and find ones that make you tick stick with the ones that make you run if you got to, if you're going to see shakespeare go and see a comedy if you're not laughing it's their fault it's not yours so make it easy on yourself get an in um they don't take long to do and life is got a lot of competition for time so a little poem is um is a good thing and then just write your own you don't need anything. If it's rubbish, you don't need to admit to it. But remember, whatever you write, it can't be any worse than Edward Lear. See you tomorrow.